I solved little nightmares. Hey hey hey, welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today we're going to solve little nightmares 3. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. In my last video, I described the nowhere as a separate reality children access via nightmares before going there themselves. What if the nowhere welcomes unwanted or brushed aside children? What if specifically children traumatized by the waking world are susceptible to the call of the nowhere? Mono's description on Little Nightmares 2's website says, His thin paper mask offers some respite, helping him forget that the world outside hates him and wants him to fail. What if this description refers to the world he's left behind. Not the world he's in now. You said you would catch me! Six! What if the source of the children's abuse in the waking world was the adults? That would mean the fairy man is not the antagonist, but a protector. He takes the children from the dangers of the waking world to the nowhere for good. Otto also describes him as a gatekeeper between realms selecting those who may enter and the fairy man trying to keep him out. Noon was tormented by the bullies at her school, but after a doctor administered a cure for her water parasite, she appeared on television leading more adults to have control over her life like her clothes. She does not feel cured and after going through nasty side effects like headaches, she was enrolled in a psychiatric institute. From Otto's commitment to being her safe space, he becomes unhinged and pushes her to a breaking point to find the nowhere and cross into that alternate reality. In chapter 5, he does not disclose to her of her head tumor as it would be an obstacle to him in his search for Cece, his sister. I've just found out that Cece was a sister and it's disturbing to have that much obsession for a sister. Noon's parents gifted her a red chrysanthemum weeks ago, which symbolizes love. Otto gave her the same gift, which is a bit weird to receive from your doctor or therapist. In addition to this, he continues to use Noon for research purposes, out of desperation, to find a mysterious figure behind his sister's disappearance. Noon wishes to confide in him about her parents as she feels she is losing a part of herself. Otto is very inconsiderate of her as he only wishes for her to tell him her whereabouts, when asleep, where Cece could be. Ah! Noon begged him not to put wires on her head, yet he did that, not respecting her wishes but out of his Zahir to find his sister. He eventually saw a vision of mist and a pupil of light. The fairy man told Noon in their last encounter, blight not within, but without. Noon understood him as he explains that giving herself to his world would cure her of all illnesses. It makes sense because every time she wakes up in these dreams, her ailments vanish. In fact, she's a stronger version of her waking world self. However, she becomes drawn to the darkness influenced by the sinister world around her. Despite the dangers of the nowhere, do the children get stronger, inheriting great power in this realm? Mono can manipulate transmissions by the signal tower and bend time. After obtaining powers from the lady, Six sucks the life force from the guests who tormented her. The raincoat girl from Very Little Nightmares is smart and dexterous in this world, finding puzzles and weaknesses of her enemies. It appears that the fairy man has granted them strengths to prey upon their predators. This whole time, he was protecting Noon from Otto's obsessive dark experiments and her tumor. He wasn't the monster, Otto was. If the children are a different version of themselves in the nowhere, what are the adults like? Were the monsters the adults? The abusers from the waking world? In chapter 5, Noon encounters a monster using a gadget to navigate the underground tunnel and amass items from the children above the drain. She said the monster was not originally that way. He was in the sewers way too long that he became one with the sewers. In fact, in comparison to the cheering children in Noon's dream, he looked horrified by the world he resided in. The bag-headed man looked through a window. Terrified. He was opposite to those kids above. The fluid nature of the spiral enables the residents to become twisted and misshapen, which makes sense considering Mono became the thin man from his stay. Ah! Are the adults paying for their crimes in their alternate reality forever, seeking to prey on children that are trapped with them? Otto demands entry into the nowhere, but the ferryman denies him passage. The first reason was because he's too old. The second reason was because he hadn't paid the toll. He warns Otto that if he torments the children under his care, 
he may be qualified to come over as an adult, perhaps as one of its monstrous denizens. I really do love the tears of children! Enraged, he targets his next patient, a boy named Ethan. He intends to use him in a similar fashion as Noon, to access the nowhere. This boy doesn't seem to speak, which reminds me of the runaway kid. What if the runaway kid was Ethan before making a transition into the nowhere? If Otto succeeded at paying the toll to cross the threshold, what was the price? His humanity? Did he make it to the nowhere as one of its denizens? I was looking for something I lost, but I think I've just found it. Let's get you back to sleep now. And tomorrow, together, we'll dream and dream and dream until we sleep again in you. If he did, what monster would he be? The only monster that I could correlate him to is the doctor. According to the doctor's description, perfection is important to the doctor and he will not allow anything to interfere with his life's work. When dozens of people began to hate their own lives for their own flaws, they sought out the doctor to remedy their woes. Otto never lets anything interfere with the goal to find his sister. Children like Noon sought him out to remedy their nightmares, when in reality, they're tormented by him. What also caught my eye was how Otto was familiar with the yellow raincoat Noon saw in her dream, in the musty room from chapter 6. Could the raincoat belong to his sister Cece? Who else do we know that wears the yellow raincoat? It's either 6? or the raincoat girl from Very Little Nightmares. Noon's real name was Ruth, but her bullies assigned her the name Noon, spelled like no one. What if Six was not originally called Six? What if she was Cece? Or what if Cece was the raincoat girl? If Otto was the doctor and Cece was Six, then he was definitely punished for his crimes. His own sister puts him in the hellhole he seek to enter. Push the vent! Push the vent! Okay, close it! He's locked in the incinerator, turn it on! Burn him! Yes, cook him! In Little Nightmares 3, a pocket dimension called the Spiral exists in the nowhere, a series of different lands contained within the realm. From the Little Nightmares 3 trailer, we know Lo and Alone have abilities to travel to different dimensions within the Spiral using mirrors. In her dreams, Noon had visited the factory, the bathhouse, a shopping mall, the sewers, and the musty room from Chapter 6. From fearing this alternate world, Noon submits to it as there's nothing left for her in the world she once knew. Black mist like in the trailer for the third game engulfed her in a place called the Halfway. It rebuilt her piece by piece before materializing a door in front of her with an eye in the center. The halfway place must be a crossing point between the waking world and the nowhere. From the halfway, Noon enters the spiral with the ferryman, a sea of eyes floating above an endless mist, each one a doorway to a different land. They shimmer, blink, and watch her carefully, liking what they see. The ferryman describes the nowhere as a world as wide and deep and narrow as the web. What if there was more to the smoke and mist than Six's possible presence? What if the mist was also an indication of Lo and Alone's entry into this world, or them succumbing to darkness as Six and Noon had? We'll never know until we play this game. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe for more content like this, like the video, and comment your theories on the podcast or Little Nightmares 3. Is Six or the Raincoat Girl Otto's sister? Do you think Otto succeeded at crossing the threshold? Comment your thoughts below. Thank you for watching, and that's all. Thank you.